Oh lads, look up there. The Red Gobbo's bringing us something for Christmas. Let's see what he's got. Oi, are you the straw hat, Morky? That's right, and I'm gonna be the king of the world. Now what you got, Miss Hack? Well, I was flying about, and it was a Yumi kit also flying about on a sleigh. So I crumped him over the head, and I took his sleigh. I figured you could use it for a little bit of a speed walk. Now them gubbins is proper shiny. We'll get the mechs to work right away on this one. A Merry Christmas to all, and to all a crumping good fight. Welcome back to the Forge of Sagas. To celebrate the end of my first year on YouTube, I wanted to do something a little special for you all. And since I was doing this Death Kill a War Trike with Logan Grimnar's Slay, I figured we'd play into the fact that Logan Grimnar is secretly Santa Claus, and do a little bit of a Christmas special for you all. I want to thank everyone who's been supporting me over this first year. It's been an absolute blast creating stuff for you all, and I hope to create a ton of new stuff for you in the coming year. But until then, let's get started on this Christmas sleigh ride. We're going to start off with the obvious and assemble Logan Grimnar's sleigh, but only the back half. We obviously don't need the wolves, they're not really going to come into play. Later on, I did come in and remove the little front plate with those cables attached, but for now you can kind of see where I came up with the idea for this. We've got old Straw Hat Morky sitting in the back, riding his war chariot into battle, and I think this is going to look cool. So for the driving force of this, instead of the wolves, I 3D printed up this wheel. I had to mix it up in Microsoft 3D Builder, but I will leave a link in the description below to all of the different pieces that I used to make it. Now the wheel by itself isn't going to go, so we've got to grab some engines. And I took a little bit of inspiration from Star Wars Pod Racers, and I grabbed the Tau Piranha Kit. The best thing about these engines is that they're really flat on the inside, so they're going to be really easy to mount to whatever I end up building to attach to this wheel. Or, as you may have figured out from the intro video, uh, what I end up building later. But we'll get to that in a bit. To create a little bit of a cowling and some armor around the tire, I grabbed this chicken wire and started to cut it with some wire snips just to hopefully bend it into a frame that then I could use to help protect this, kind of like what you see on the front of a motorcycle. I figured the orcs looted the wheel off of some other vehicle and then had to scrap together some armor, so building a frame like this would allow me to recreate that very scrappy orc feel. It's really easy, all I had to do was snip the wire and continue to bend until I had the shape that I wanted. Once I had the shape in place, I needed to hold the wheel to the frame, and to do that I grabbed this hex bolt. I figured this would work really nicely, it doesn't go through the hole in the chicken wire, it's about the right size for the inside, all I have to do is drill out the center of the wheel. Would have been nice if I thought about this in my 3D modeling and put the hole in when I printed it, but you know, you live and learn. I did a lot of living and learning on this project, and uh, you'll see why in a second. I attached the whole thing together with hot glue because I was starting to get a bit of a bad vibe, and I should have known better at this stage to pull back and reevaluate what I was doing. But I still thought this was going to be a good idea. It was all looking right, it was the right proportion, so I continued hot gluing things together because that nagging feeling did not go away, and I wanted to be able to pull this apart just in case something went awry. And this is where things started to go downhill. I have some friends who've done some sculpting over wireframes with air dry clay, and so I figured, heck, if they can do it, I can probably do it and it'll turn out fine. So I rolled some out, cut it into the shape of my engine, and rolled it on there. You know, I really thought this was going to work a little better and that I could keep it smooth and this wireframe would support it and everything would turn out fine. I'd be able to sculpt in some nice details once I got it all filled together. It was going to be great. As you can imagine, my lack of experience with sculpting came to bite me here, and it did not work out well at all. So. I decided, you know what, this isn't going to work, let's pull it apart and let's try something else. So I decided instead to try some electronic sculpting and break out some 3D modeling software. I used Microsoft 3D Builder to create this little cowling shape and, you know, again, I thought I had something going here. Work vehicles are very blocky and then they're just coated in armor, so I thought I could turn this into something. In the spirit of orcs looting everything that isn't nailed down, I went through my bits box and grabbed every conceivable bit of armor plating that I could glue down to this piece. Grabbed some admech bits, some basing pieces from the Imperium basing kit, all kinds of things. If I had it, it was coming out. And I just started to glue things in place in a very haphazard fashion just to see what kind of things I could make. I figured if I piled enough junk on there, it would look properly orky and it would all turn out fine. 
However, again, it did not, and I'm too ashamed to show you the finished product, so we're gonna jump to what actually worked. I went over through Thingiverse and I found this sidecar attachment for the Forge World Space Marine bikes to turn them into the attack bikes. I combined that with some tank track files that I found and created this little carriage at the front that will pull along our sleigh just as well as the wheel did. And you know, with the tank tracks would be a little all-terrain. As I prayed that the third time would be the charm, I glued on my engines again and got to work making this thing look properly orky. The fact that this little sidecar contraption had nice flat sides made it easy to glue on the engines. However, there was still a little bit too large of a gap for me to just go ahead and fill in. So instead, I decided to cut some plastic cards into a thin strip, which could then simulate some metal strips that the orc mechs had used essentially to just strap the engines onto this sidecar weirdness. I used a 0.75mm thick sheet just so that it would be nice and pliable and I could bend it into shapes really easily without having to bust out anything like my heat gun. You can see here how I'm just bending it into place, wrapping it around the engine to make sure that it conforms to the various angles because we can bet that the Orc Max would do the exact same thing if it was actual metal, just banging on it with hammers until it looks the way they want so that they can put in some rivets and make sure that this whole contraption doesn't fall apart in front of the boss and, you know, that would be bad. So. I'm gonna go ahead and make a bunch of these and strap these engines on. Here are the four that I decided to make. I just went off at odd random angles just to give it a little bit more of that orky nature. To really sell the effect that this has been bolted together, we need some rivets. And for that, I turned to some craft store nail beads. You can get these in a whole bunch of different sizes so you can find the one that best fits what you're using. But I just went ahead, picked them up with the tip of my knife, a little bit of super glue, and glued them in place. However, we want to be extra sure that these rocket engines don't come off, so we're also going to chain them in place. I got this chain from a dollar store necklace, I just broke off the little thing that was on it, and started to wrap it around the model. Again, it's just to reinforce that ramshackle feel that all our technology should have. So, once you're happy with the layout, you can just go ahead and in some places where no one's going to see, apply a little super glue to help hold everything in place. Now one of the things that you get with the Piranha Kit is two gun drones, and I would assume that orcs like gun drones. They're kind of like a flying rot with a lot more DACA on it, so what's not to love? The only issue is that the drones keep wanting to pop out of their holders and shoot at the orc test drivers. Now we can't have that happen when the boss is driving, so we're going to make some more metal straps out of plastic card and bolt the drones in as well. Now with my conversions, I like to represent all of the weapons that a model has, so those gun drones are going to be our twin boomsticks, and this Helldrake head is going to become our killer jet. With the Hellflamer mouth installed, it's going to be able to represent that Flamer slash Melta profile, and be right in front where Morky's going to be able to use it on anybody who gets in his way. So, to fill in the neck joint, we're just going to mix up a little bit of Milliput and smash it in there, and then we'll scrape away any excess once we get it mounted on the vehicle. Sorry for that being out of focus for a second. Once it was in place, I came in with my silicone brushes and sculpting tools and began to smooth everything out. I left the milliput pretty thick, as I figured the mechs would have had to attach a ton of different pipes to feed all the ammunition from the sidecar up into the dragon's mouth, and then they just covered it with a bunch of metal and scrap just to protect it all. Now that I've finally sorted out the front part of this kit bash, we need to attach it to the sleigh. To make sure I had a nice flat connection, I cut away the part of the sleigh where it was supposed to connect to the wolves and sanded that down flat. That way we would have a nice little connection. It took a little bit of sanding and shaving on both sides and a lot of dry fitting just to make sure everything was nice and smooth, but after a while I got it all situated and I glued both pieces to each other and down on the base. With everything securely in place, it's time to bring old Straw Hat into the picture and make sure he's going to sit nicely on here. We can see since he's on this 50mm base, he's not going to fit. I wanted him to be nice and stable on this so he wouldn't fall off and break or anything, so I grabbed some of this plastic mesh from the craft store and figured I could use that to outline the shape of a platform. The nice thing about this stuff is that it's see-through, so you can hold it over this odd chariot shape and just count out what you want to cut out. Then once you're ready, you can pull it down onto your cutting mat and make all the cuts you need. I ended up making myself this little Wylox armory sandwich of plastic card mesh and plastic card again. but. It was just too thick and it wasn't really looking how I wanted it to, so I figured I would go ahead and try something else. To fix this, I decided it was time for Morky to come off his base temporarily because without his base, he actually fits in there really nicely. So we're gonna go ahead and get his foot off and then we're gonna turn to my favorite tool in kit bashing, the magnet. 
Normally I put neodymium magnets in places like the arms so that I can do weapon swaps or stuff like that. However, in this case, the magnets are going in the foot. That way, I can put magnets on the underside of his base so they'll snap onto the base, but I can also pull him off and snap him into his chariot, and he'll stay there relatively well. Now the nice thing about Logan Grimnar's sleigh is that there's plenty of room in there for the magnets. The problem for me at this point was that I had already assembled it, so I had to cut myself a little bit of a hole. I decided to go through this circular piece in the center, as it already has that little foothold for me to start from, plus it's the thinnest piece of plastic on the chariot. So I came in with my knife and just cut it open a little bit until I had a large enough hole that I could get the magnets in. Once I'd gotten all the magnets in there that I needed, I just came in and re-glued the piece I'd cut out in place. You can go ahead and fill in any gaps later with a little bit of liquid green stuff, and it'll all look perfectly fine. Now it's time to get old Straw Hat Morky in his war chariot, and you know what, he stays pretty well. If I shake it really violently, he'll come a little bit loose, but overall I'm pretty happy with this. Now obviously, the simpler way would have been to just not have him move between this and his other base, but I mean, come on, this is Straw Hat Morky. Sometimes he's going to be on his trike, sometimes he's going to be on foot, but I want to use him as my boss as often as I can. As I was getting ready to start painting, I kept looking back at Logan Grimnar's sleigh and saying, it doesn't look looted enough. You know, the front is very looted, obviously, but this just, it's just the kit. There's no kit bash here. However, me and this kit bash have already had plenty of design issues, so before I did anything drastic and ruined all my hard work, I figured I'd sleep on it. When I woke up in the morning, I realized that sometimes less is more, so I decided to only add two pieces. One was going to be this little straw hat, which is going to go on the wolf's head, and then I also decided to add this little Jolly Roger armor panel, which has my straw hat skull and crossbones on it. I can put that right there, right over this little panel of the wolf fighting Magnus, so instead it looks like the wolf is fighting the straw hat freebooters, which you know makes sense given that we obviously came from Thal, the silly space wolf umis, and then stole this from them. The hat went on pretty easily, just required a little bit of drilling to hollow out even more of the interior, and a little ear surgery on the wolf head just to make sure the hat would fit nicely. Once I was happy with the drive fit for this piece, I just went in and glued it in place. By keeping the added detail to a minimum on this part of the model, it allows me to preserve this iconic shape. Everyone is familiar with Logan Grimnar Slay, and they're going to recognize it the second you put this piece down on the table. However, adding this jaunty little straw hat to the wolf head just gives it that little bit of free Buddha's flair. To help get our Jolly Roger panel to conform to the shape of the sleigh, we're going to use this heat gun. The nice thing about FDM printers is you're printing in a thermoplastic, so with just a little bit of heat added, this piece of plastic is going to bend really nicely. You can see it do it right in real time just from the force of the air going through it. So, you can then take my tweezers and get it close to the model. Thankfully it's the day after and all that texture paint was dry. And then I can just work it in place and try and get it to sit exactly where I want it to. If it doesn't form right the first time, feel free to reheat it and try again. To help reinforce that orky aesthetic, I came in with some more rivets and put them in the four corners of the panel. It's a little thing, but I find that those little details really help make a piece come together. The one issue I had with my 3D printed accessories is the lines. As you can see, there are all these concentric rings, which, you know, that's fine and all, but the straw hat lines are always up and down when we see them in one piece. So, to simulate that and to get this shape looking correct, I grabbed my Dremel and just carved them in there very gently using one of the smaller tips. It was a little bit of a time consuming process, but the end result was worth it. With a quick coat of paint, Old Straw Hat Morky is ready to lead the Straw Hat Free Buddhas in a speed walk. I hope that you all enjoyed this build as much as I did. Despite a couple of hiccups in the design and implementation of this kit bash, it was a thoroughly enjoyable experience and I'm really happy with the end result. This is definitely going to be a cool centerpiece for my eventual Free Buddhas army. If there's any conversions you'd like to see me attempt or any other projects you'd like to see me tackle on the channel, feel free to leave me a comment. If you like what we're doing here, give us a like and subscribe to the channel to keep up to date on all of our future projects. Thank you so much for watching, and I hope to see you again the next time we ignite the Forge of Sagas.